Yesterday, a federal high court in Abuja ordered the removal of David Omahi and Eric Kelechi Igwe as governor and deputy governor of Ebonyan State, following their defection from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress. In the judgment delivered by Justice Inyang Ekwo, the court held that 393,042 votes polled by Omahi in the March 9, 2019 governorship election belonged to the PDP and cannot be legally transferred to the APC. Justice Equo ordered INEC to immediately receive from PDP names of persons to replace Sumahi and his deputy, or in the alternative, conduct a fresh gubernatorial election in Eboin State, in line with section 177 subsection C of the Constitution. The court also ordered that 16 Eboin lawmakers who defected with the governor to vacate their seats, having dumped the party that brought them to office. The order by the Abuja court, however, contradicted an earlier ruling by another court of coordinate jurisdiction in Guzao Zamfara State, which struck out a suit seeking Governor Bello Matawali's removal after his defection from the PDP to the APC. Now, joining us to discuss yesterday's judgment and help us to understand why Nigeria's court of coordinate jurisdiction continued to grant contradictory orders, despite the warning by the Chief Justice of Nigeria against such acts, is Robert Clark, a senior advocate of Nigeria. Good morning, sir, and welcome to the show. It is my pleasure. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Well, very quickly, we'd like to have your take. Good on... morning, Abati. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. We'd like to have your take on the significance of this ruling uh, by uh, Justice Inyang Ekwa. Um, you know, lawyers have been arguing back and forth. They come and saying, well, this is uh, contrary to uh, the precedents uh, in, in place, and that the law has since moved beyond amateur versus INEC, and that there are other cases that show that uh, this particular judgment may have been arrived at by in Korea. The second point will be your response to the uh, uh, emotional uh, reaction of the uh, uh, governor, affected governor, David Mai, who, you know, in televised address, constituted himself into an appeal court over a properly constituted court of uh, uh, Nigeria. And earlier this morning, I said the, the governor should be charged for content, as far she could hear, because I don't think he has such powers uh, to be... Uh, berating or to be uh, tarnishing, to be insulting, you know, a learned jurist doing his professional work. Well, the jurists have spoken, the judge has spoken, everybody has spoken about this matter. My belief is that I want to take a position where I analyze the law as it is today, both on the law and on the precedence of the courts, and make everybody in Nigeria know the situation and form an opinion. Because the way things are going in the judiciary and the politicians is becoming something of a concern to you and I. Now, let me make it clear to you. We lawyers, we deal on facts and law. Nothing else on facts and law. Where we get the facts wrong, we get the, wrong, the, the law wrong. Now, the first thing to consider in this case is that, one, the Federal High Court in Zamfara had given a decision on a virtually similar case before it. It declined jurisdiction based on the fact that it lacks jurisdiction. The Aboyne also High Court has also given a decision on the same matter, claiming that there was no provision of the law upon which the governor can be impeached. Now the question is, what does the law say? The law is clear, very clear, and there is no doubt about it in the mind of any lawyer or judge, that the provisions in the Constitution, it says that a party, the duty of a political party in an election matter is to sponsor a candidate. So before a candidate can contest an election in Nigeria, he must be sponsored by a political party. That does not ipso facto make a political party part of the uh, election. The main duty of a political party is just to sponsor. A political party is a legal being. 
A candidate at an election is a human being. The election only permits a human being to contest an election. It does not allow a legal being to contest an election, but only to sponsor. So Amechi's case was wrong ab initio from the beginning. By claiming when votes are cast at an election, the vote goes to the party. No way. The party was not a candidate. There are many people who voted for a candidate and are not members of his party. So it is wrong for any judge to say that when an election is held, the totality of the vote cast by a candidate or for a candidate was from his party. No way. Now, in the good sense of those who created the Constitution, when a candidate in the nature of a governor, of a deputy governor, is presented for election and wins that election, he not only now becomes a head of that state, his, his duties now makes it possible for him to rule the, the whole constituency comprising various ethnic nationalities. And therefore, when a governor takes a seat, the Constitution recognizes his new status, not as a candidate, but as the head of the state. And therefore, the Constitution, in its good sense, says, like, to remove a governor, and the Constitution is very specific, it says three things must happen. Either he resigns, either he dies, or incap incapacitated. Nowhere in that provision of the Constitution does it say when he crosses a carpet. No. And therefore, no judge has to infer anything in the Constitution that is not contained in the Constitution. That paragraph that says that anybody who changes a political party during his tenure only relates to the National Assembly and to the uh, local assemblies. Therefore, the Federal High Court in Port Harcourt was very wrong to have bypassed the Constitution that clearly shows how a governor can be removed and to rely on other parts of a law that are inconsistent with the Constitution. But I am not talking now about the law. The law is clear. I make a Macri's case is no more law. We all know that. I, Robert Clark, about 14 years ago when I was doing Timmy Pray, told this, a panel of seven judges in the Supreme Court that I don't believe in Amechi's law because a political party does not contest an election. It's only a medium through which a candidate is presented for an election. And therefore, votes cast as an election are not cast for the, for the party, but for the individual candidate who has been sponsored. So that is settled. Now about the outburst of the governor, that leaves much to be desired. A governor is expected to have decorum. A governor is expected to show maturity. But you don't blame him so much. You don't know what facts he has about the judge. And he all went out to claim that the judge was uh, purchased. That is a very sad situation in Nigeria. But I have warned all Nigerians. In every reaction I have with Nigerians, I have stated it, that the judges of the courts are not per se corrupt, but the politicians we have today have corrupted them. So it is for you to decide whether by now, having been corrupted by the politicians, you can claim they too are corrupt. But my belief is that it is the politicians who have been corrupting the judges, and not that the judges are corrupt. So what do you make of the argument that certain That's political parties do have certain safe seats? I'll use Lagos State as an example. There's a joke that often you know, cracks that Lagos State can literally field a goat. That yeah, APC can literally field a goat and they will win Lagos State. Obviously, that's not true. Some hyperbole there, some levity there. But you get the point, sir. What about those who argue on that um, yeah. along those lines? Well, I remember when I was a young man, people say that 
if the action group of Nigeria in an election brings out a goat, people will vote for that goat than, put for a, than voting for a person outside the action group. Lagos is presumed, I'm not saying it is an APC state, but it's presumed by many people to be an APC state. But whether APC can put up the goat in Lagos and people would vote for it, I don't know about that. I'm not a politician. I have never voted in my life, but I've been associated with politicians for the past 60 years. And I can tell you that the politicians are a special breed of people. They know what they do, they know what they get, and they know how to get what they want. Mm. Amazing, sir. Uh, let's dial back and let's look at this judgment. So what are you saying invariably now, sir? Is it that other judgments in the past that have constantly re re reiterated the fact that it is the political party that won the vote, is it that those judgments were not right? I mean, because we can look at the case of uh, Amechi, we can look at other cases. Is that the case? And is it that there's a misnomer with citing Section 221 here, uh, like Justice Inyang did cite? Is that the case? Yeah, well, let me be clear with you. The, the Constitution is clear. The electoral law is clear that a candidate at an election must be sponsored by a political party. It is so clear in the law. In Amechi's case, the Supreme Court turned it over. And I know I had about five of those judges as friends who were seeking my opinion on what consequential order to give. Because my belief is that an inanimate object, a legal, uh, uh, a legal person who is a party, cannot contest an election. Therefore, when an election is held, the election is being held for a candidate who is a human being. Because the party, you know, proposed him as a candidate, does not make the votes cast for him, the votes for the party. Because the party never contested the election. Now, Amechi's case, I remembered when I was, about 14 years ago, I was representing Timmy Presilva at the Supreme Court. And the question of Amechi's case came up. And I told the panel, I said, my lords, I am not going to use that case because I, Robert Clark, I don't believe in it. They were all shocked. I said, yes, as far as I'm concerned, it is not good law. But fortunately, that position has been jettisoned. The National Assembly has taken that matter up. And Roti Miamechi's case is no more the law in Nigeria. Well, sir, with due respect. Uh, the position that you are uh, maintaining in this matter is the same position that Michael Zekome has expressed uh, in a lengthy commentary on the matter. And he also relied, as you have done, on precedents. And this morning I said it would be interesting to have this matter go on appeal all the way uh, so that we can have some kind of clarity on it. Now, Michael Zekome, SAN, quoting the precedents, cited a plethora of cases, cited the Michi case, even cited AG Federation versus uh, Atiku Abubakar, which was a 2007 case. But is it not a fact that in 2016, the same Supreme Court of Nigeria still upheld the same position it held in uh, uh, Amechi versus INEC and said clearly that it's political parties uh, that uh, owe the, uh, the ticket, that own the ticket, and that candidates yeah, uh, nearly hold those positions as trustees for the candidate. And if you look at the ballot paper, it's political parties that are on the ballot paper. It's not the candidates. So I, I think we need a little more clarification look, on I this, have although I know this matter will be considered Yeah, let at, me uh, clarify this. Level. Yeah, up to, 19, up to uh, 2016, Amethyst's case was the superior law, and every court was adhering to it. But I've just told you now that I, Robert Clark, when I was before them, I told them that I was not going to adhere to Amechi's case because I don't believe in it. It is bad law. And since then, all courts have jettisoned Amechi's case. The Supreme Court. So if they claimed in 2016 that it was the law, they were right because that was the only judgment 
on that subject matter. But I can assure you today that if all these matters go on appeal to the Supreme Court, they will make it clear to you that a political party is a legal being and cannot contest an election. Therefore, votes could not have been cast for a person who is not a candidate. At an election, it is a human being sponsored by a political party that contests an election. And it can be voted not only by members of his party, but there are many independent views and human beings who will vote for a candidate. So it is wrong to say that the totality of all votes cast for a candidate emanated from a political party. Okay, we'd like to... There is no proof of that. Okay, we'd like to thank you, sir, uh, Chief uh, Robert Clark. Although one concern would be, is uh, independent right. candidacy part of the law? You know, um, that would be one question. So is the candidate independent of the political party? But we seem to have uh, come to the end of the conversation uh, this morning. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, I have, I, I had wanted to take this question. Yes. I had wanted to take this question of independent candidate. We need it in our Nigerian law. But unfortunately, the Constitution and the Electoral Act does not permit independent candidates. I can assure you, this electoral reform that is being done by the House, if this is brought up now, it will bring sanity to Nigerian politics. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us.